Greetings, Aloha. What's going on? It's Mike's and Gracie. Boom. From livemyassoff.com. We are currently in Hingham, Massachusetts. Google it. We are at a location called World's End. Bang it. Uh, and this is, we've been here like two or three times already, as you might have noticed. I don't do much videoing anymore. And the main reason for that is because Gracie's with me. So I don't need to, <laughs> I don't need to, you know, prove or show her anything of places we, we will go, we go to them. But I carry around my GoPro and every now and then I turn it on. First of all, let me say thank you to Dave for the recommendation of the, the Wasabi batteries. I, uh, I drop ship them to my parents' house, ordering them on Amazon from Bangkok. So basically I'm a drop shipper. Uh, there's gonna be a link below for my drop shipping class and uh, it's only $99.99 in 17 payments of $47.74. So if you wanna know about how to drop ship batteries for your GoPro from Bangkok, you know, cause I'm a digital nomad, then uh, hey, hit that like button and, uh, no, sorry, smash the like button and uh, subscribe and tell your friends. And intro in two, one, hi, how's it going? I'm Genuine Mikes. So I wanted to share this area with you because this is an area, uh, so this is Hingham Harbor uh and hingham goes all the way basically over this way and then sort of around a corner of the harbor um and it's well in the summer i would label it basically it's perfect um i have not boated anywhere uh, that has the level of enjoyment that I get from boating around here. Um, the, technically these are all the Boston Harbor Islands, but this is Hingham Harbor. So that little island there that you probably can't tell the difference between the island and the land behind it, but there's an island right there. It's called Button Island. Uh, that one out there is called Langley. There's two more islands right there and there, actually right past that red buoy. And those of you who boat, you know that red means red right return. So that is the buoy that will be on your right when you're returning through the channel back to the harbor. The boat's there and sort of past them. That is the Hingham Yacht Club. And where we're walking, sorry, where I'm walking and Gracie is walking also with her wildly successful YouTube channel, Gracie LaQuatsera. Please subscribe, share, smash the like button. Additionally, I want to say thank you and I want to uh, to Robbie from walking in my shoes Thailand And I want to encourage you guys to type into Google walking in my shoes Thailand the full thing otherwise you're gonna get an incredibly long list of videos from Depeche Mode for walking in my shoes so walking in my shoes Thailand and it was neat hanging out with him and doing the interviews and I really appreciate you guys coming by the premiere yesterday actually the, so let's for the, okay so the premiere on that occurred on Thursday June 30th um, because I don't know when I'll upload this right now it is July 1st which is a Friday and uh, it is about so the air temperature is probably about 70, 75. Um, I'm gonna totally be using British units, English units while here. So luckily my incredibly brilliant friends like Chris will likely do the quick conversion from Fahrenheit to Celsius and upload that for all of you commoners. The, uh, the cool thing about Robbie is that while he's been to Thailand three or four times, um, when he goes, he goes for a significant amount of time, 
But the neat thing I like about it is that he is still in full on exploring mode. And I, uh, I, that's a great reminder for me to, to, to force myself to still have some degree of exploration and desire for new experiences in Thailand. And the good news is, is that during COVID and when I was doing a lot of videos, because again, I was showing Gracie, hey honey, when you get back here, here's where we're going. Uh, we were just in the car actually talking about that and she was like, well, we still need to go to Koh Phangan and we still need to go to Krabi and we definitely, and we have huge plans. Every time, it's neat really. <laughs> Every time we talk about going somewhere, we talk about how we're gonna get Eurice there, uh, her daughter, our daughter, my daughter, her daughter, our daughter. I don't really know, it's, it's weird that I like sort of qualify that each time, I'm not sure why. Um, possibly because, you know, she's the newest Okate in my life. <laughs> Gracie was the originator and then uh, after we were together about a year and a half maybe? Maybe, yeah, maybe two years. Uh, I went back to their house, their farm, for the first time and met Yuri's. First time I met her, she was very shy. She's also, you know, a lot younger. Um, and uh, she was very shy. And then the next time I came back, I can completely understand why she was, you know, more comfortable. She was like, okay, he's not a one-timer. <laughs> he's actually, he actually shows up every Christmas or whenever. So. I do feel as though I have a degree of emotional and financial and mm, spiritual responsibility towards her and that's a very nice feeling um, and she's wonderful and she's brilliant and she's inquisitive and she's smart and she's intelligent and she's uh, she adds a lot of value to her community, meaning her peers, as well as those older and younger to her. She's got an amazing default level of servant leadership, which just blows me away. It wasn't until I was like 38 or 39 when I started my master's degree that I started learning how to behave the way that she does now at 15. So, it's awesome. Anyway, so that's that part. But here is an area, again, it's called World's End, and it is basically a park. It is maintained by a pretty well-funded uh, group called the Trustees of Reservations. And if you're not from Massachusetts, then you're probably not gonna understand what that is because the majority of the United States, public areas like this that people come and enjoy the outdoors, are traditionally funded and managed by either a state park system or a federal park system. There are indeed other states that have sort of private um, you know, donation funded sort of outdoor recreational areas. But the Trustees of Reservations, Google it, is a very, very awesome organization that I would submit should be the model for all state park systems. But I can understand that because of the size of the United States, the state park system arguably is probably the best way to maintain and manage. Um, but when you're in a state like Massachusetts, where the entire state has approximately the same, if not less, than the population of greater Bangkok, it's a lot easier to manage, right? It's a lot easier to manage the healthcare system in Canada, for example than it would be to manage a system like that in the United States. Because Canada has even less people living in it than California, so. Yeah, there's a certain scale, it seems, to certain things. But anyway, back to the beautiful park that we're at, World's End. World's End is effectively two mounds. And in the middle, there is an isthmus of sorts that connects these two mounds. The first mound, 
because it's certainly not a mountain it's a hill the first hill which is actually a little bit taller than actual world's end actual world's end is the second mound that juts out way past there right around this beach you see where all the dark 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 right with those couple of rocks there right around there is that isthmus that i'm talking about and this area here is planters hill and then once you get past the isthmus then you are in fact on world's end but people refer to this entire place as world's end and we're walking down here because it is uh, not necessarily the lowest, but it is quite low tide. And during um, higher, if not high tide, the water comes up to about there. And Gracie and I actually walked along this the last time we were here, or one of, excuse me, last times we were here. And there, there, the, all of this was water. <laughs> uh, and we hobbled along on those rocks and said, ah, oh, this is, we're going to do this at low tide next time. And uh, so I'm really grateful that we're doing this. And, you know, I share this and I, and I, so I love Thailand, right? And for a while, I really loved San Diego. But for the most part, I really didn't make any videos until I started going to Thailand. My goal when I moved to Thailand, in air quotes, permanently in November of 2019 was, okay, Gracie and I are going to live in Thailand. We're going to travel all over Southeast Asia. We're going to have a sort of a central, you know, home base sort of thing that we can always come back to. And we chose Bangkok to be that, which was a great choice and still is. And actually i didn't realize that that went way out there maybe we should go and walk out there um but of course then COVID happened as of march of 2020 and so therefore the whole travel options dwindled not the least of which was i'm going to come home here and visit my folks every summer um but gratefully now we've been able to do that and we're even married so my parents let us sleep in the same bed <laughs> um so you want to walk out there? Yeah. yeah. Cuz it's got so I don't think it's I don't I think it's like this. I don't think it's like real muddy. No, I think we're good. So we'll take you along with us. Um So yeah, so you know, it's funny, right? Like I talk about, you know, living the dream and that sort of thing and a lot of my dreams have come true. I talked about that in my first several why Thailand videos because it seemed as though the dreams that I have to, of going to Thailand occurred and then once I got to Thailand more dreams came true so but one of my dreams was live in Asia travel around with Gracie and come back to New England Hingham for the summer and hang out in an area like around here like the you know those those houses over there i thought the fantasy would be you know rent a house like right on the water right with a dock and have a boston whaler and if you don't know what that is google boston whaler um because that is the best boat in the entire world <laughs> uh and i really wish i could provide Uris with the the part of my childhood that I would once again label as li literally perfect, which was when I was 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, pretty much. And I had a 13 foot Boston Whaler. I had a, I had a, I had a boat before I had a car. I had, a, uh, I had the ability to drive a boat before that I had my driver's license. And uh, I would come out here in the summers for as many days as I possibly could and, uh, and cruise around with my buddies. And uh, we would we would camp on the islands, but we would just cruise around because there's there's islands everywhere. I mean, you could just you, you know we would launch the boat way over there at the ramp. Sometimes we would go to Button Island, but for the most part, it's small and boring. So we would drive around it, but occasionally we would stop there at Langley, and it's got that little beach. And I would do a lot of that when I was with my dad. My dad and I used to take the boat out, and he and I referred to that Langley Island as Treasure Island. Because it seemed like every time we went out there, we found something. One time I found a Swiss Army knife. The next time we found this really, really cool skillet that we used for years to make pancakes because it had a neatness factor. 
and we found other things i think i believe i even found a five dollar bill there when i was well so okay so that was and <laughs> i found a five dollar like 40 something years ago right so i mean you know a five dollar bill would be awesome right now <laughs> so imagine when i was 14 and it was uh let's see it would have been what 82 1982 so it's a little muddy but we're there it's not it's just i guess it's just just here. a little bit muddy here yeah look at those bitchin new balance sneakers you got we got those last year at marshall's almost three years ago almost three years ago yeah um i got these Gracie and I got two pairs of shoes when we were in Bangkok before we New left. Year. Yeah, so we got this around New Year's in Bangkok. So it's a little muddy, but not sinking too much. Yeah, I guess you should walk there. But actually, if we're going to explore, we should go all the way out to the end here. Because then... Because then, after being out here, we can come back here in basically six hours, when there will be high tide, and be like, oh my god, we were standing It's not as muddy over there. Okay, well, I should, yeah, I think I'm good. Um, I, again, no zoom lens on the GoPro, right? But I don't know if you can see that far, for farther ahead out there. Uh, the people rowing, if you've ever seen any, well, if you've ever been to Boston, and, or you've, and you've certainly been near the Charles River, then undoubtedly you've seen people rowing like that, sculling. That, this, that word actually really isn't used any longer. Uh, you know, and they would have, the in the movies, they would do shots of people rowing past uh, in MIT, uh, which is sort of right on the water there, right on the Charles um, River. But that was another thing I used to do as a boy. We used to take the Boston Whaler and we used to drive all the way into Boston. That's the, that's the city line across there. We would drive up past Quincy, past Dorchester, or if you're from here, past Dot. And, um, and we would go into the Boston Harbor and we would go into uh, the channel and we would go up into uh, basically past the airport, which would be on our right up into the Charles River, and one time we went up to the Charles River so far, we went all the way up to Dedham. Google it, D-E-D-H-A-M, Dedham, Massachusetts. And if you look at about how far that is west of Boston, you'll be like, oh my God, how'd you make it? Well, the Boston Whaler only needs six inches of water. <laughs> so literally me and my, I think it was Rob who was, it might have been Steve. It might have been Steve, I can't remember, but. Uh, I think it was Steve, actually. I think we went, and so we went all the way up to Dedham. Uh, basically, meaning we went all the way up until the propeller of the motor started regularly hitting the rocks on the ground, and we tilt the motor up, but then we still couldn't go any further, so we used our oars and spun the boat around and then came back. And uh, that was a very enjoyable time. I have been looking on Craigslist for used Boston Whalers. <laughs> <laughs> because I figured like okay so we were in the Philippines right and yeah you can rent a car a truck or whatever but you know Chris knows this because he and I were in pretty tight contact but um, we we ended up buying a 4x4 we bought a Mitsubishi uh, Pajero which is basically a Mitsubishi Montero model in this part of the world it was a used one but it was very capable the four-wheel drive system in that that machine was outstanding and definitely served our purposes for getting to and from the farm with goods as well as humans and uh, so now I'm, I'm and we owned it for approximately two months and then we left it with a guy who basically sold it to us a used car dealer very honest I this guy if you get okay if you are ever uh, on the island of what is your island Panay? Panay. If you're ever on the island of Panay, which is basically the big island south of Boracay, where most people will know in the Philippines, they'll know Boracay. But if you're ever on the island of Panay and you are willing to go to Iloilo or have a need to go to Iloilo, which is on the opposite end of the island from Boracay, there is a guy that I absolutely 
would recommend for buying a used car. He is incredibly honest and incredibly flexible. Um, you know, he didn't know us from anyone that just, we just showed up. I just found him on Facebook. I showed up on his, on his lot and I said, okay, well, I'm interested in this and we'll pay you this amount. Um, and I'm like, but we can only pay you like 20,000 pesos a week kind of thing. And sometimes we would miss a week, not intentionally, but it was, you know, moving money over. It was a complete pain in the ass. Uh, and then Gracie would send him a certain amount of money. And then we would also have repairs done to the, to the truck, but he was great. And then I said, all right, well, we're going to leave. I'm going to leave it with you and you can sell it for this amount. And then I got to the point where it's like, look, dude, what's the amount that you want to buy it back from us? And then you sell it and then you make, you know, a profit or whatever. And it worked out great. And he paid us back in two payments, you know? So I, anyway, my point is, is that I have this paradigm in my mind, like, you know, if I'm somewhere for a couple of months, I can buy a used insert item here, use it and then resell it now. The difference, of course, is that the weather right now is arguably amazing. And there's a very good reason why I come home to New England, to Boston, to Hingham in July and August, because there are days when it's even hotter here than in Bangkok. It's not more humid, but it's hotter. And I like that weather. Meaning that this is very outdoor weather and New England basically has about three months of good weather a year Good as I define it most people who you know are not me uh, Would argue that there are way too many hot days in the summer and I'm like there aren't enough hot days in the year no matter where I live but You know skiing is also popular here, right? It's snowmobiling but uh, the, I, I say that because at the end of summer, no one really wants to buy summer things. And so, you know, you can use a four by four pretty much all year round and need to in the Philippines. You can't use a Boston Whaler much past September. <laughs> um, and by Boston Whaler, I mean specifically the Boston Whaler that's only 13 feet long and has about a 45 horsepower motor. Um, and, uh, that was my uh, that was my wonderful childhood cruising around in, in one of those I might get a 15 foot or a 17 foot now but I don't think I'd want anything bigger and uh, you know I mean you look at like the, so for example like the yacht club in hang in Hingham I would say the biggest boat in the majority of Marseille boats I would say the biggest boat over there is maybe 50 feet long not even probably more like 35 40 want to go back okay is it coming up? Yeah. Okay. It's quick. Okay. Um, there's a lot of flags here. So I'm gonna look on. Uh, there's a couple things that I want to look on Craigslist more for and get for us while we're here, and either dispose of or leave and not worry about it or care about the cost or basically sell it. And one of those is I want to attend. I want to go to some yard sales and I want to get a barbecue because it would be really cool to barbecue. My parents don't barbecue, and you know they're just like, why would they have one? I like pork barbecue and chicken barbecue. We could do pork and chicken, yeah. yeah. And the pork part would be cool because my dad doesn't eat pork. He they don't particularly eat a whole lot of meat or that sort of thing. They eat fish, but in any case, Your we could barbecue. Like... Mom, my, yeah, mom will eat chicken and, and pork and stuff. Uh, but beef, we're not a real big, although we did buy some beef hot dogs that were quite good because you can't get those in Thailand. I mean, maybe you can, but I haven't found them. It's like actual, it's like a, it's like a hamburger that's rolled. There's so much beef, like a steak, like a round steak almost. Um... So I'm just thinking, okay, well, yeah, we'll go get like a barbecue and I want to get some lawn chairs. Gracie looked at our backyard and within five minutes, she was like, oh my God, we, this would be great to sit with chairs out here. And uh, I completely agree with that because for the most part in the mornings, we sit out in the porch um, and it would be really nice to sit out in the backyard coffee. having coffee. Yeah, indeed. And, uh, but also do that in the afternoon. So we need to get an umbrella. So anyway, that's something that I want to buy and effectively just like store in the basement for the next time we come back or, you know, give it away or whatever. Now the boat on the other hand, that's a little bit more of a, <laughs> that's a little bit more of a financial commitment. And, uh, 
you know, it's not just like, oh, cool, I just bought a boat, let's go in it. It's like, okay, cool, I just got a boat, now we gotta register it, now we gotta add it to the insurance policy, and now we gotta register the trailer, and now we gotta get a hitch for some vehicle, or probably buy a different vehicle. My dad is a Honda, my mom is a Saab, and you don't just huck a hitch on the back of those cars. Um, so that would mean we would probably have to buy a I know, but I'll be good once I get up here. So I don't, I mean, I, I don't need a four wheel drive truck. Absolutely not. We absolutely use my dad's Mercedes to trailer the, to trailer the whaler around. It was a 1975, but of course, you know, cars of that vintage has had infinitely more metal. The hitch on that thing was amazing. It was, you know, solid iron and everything and right, welded right to the frame. And you know, you can't really do that on a unibody car <laughs> like a Honda where the entire rear end of it is plastic. So, um, so I don't know what we do. Uh, but um, again, that was part of the, the thinking and quite frankly, the fantasy is like, hey, how cool would it be to have like a house right there that had its own dock and then have our little whaler and then Gracie and I get up and we just cruise around and drop your Reese off on an island and say, hey, look, we're gonna be back in two days, figure out how to live. Wow, wow. And then she could be a survivalist. Yeah, she'll be fine with the condo. She'll be fine with the condo, yeah. That's about her speed. So, yeah, that's another thing that we're talking about. It's really cool, I don't know if you guys like do this with your mate or your mates, right? But you talk about the future, right? I mean, and because so, I'm not a past guy, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of history. Uh, I'm either, oh my god, the present is freaking spectacular, I'm having a gratitude attack, or oh my god, five minutes from now, five weeks from now, five years from now, just wait until how gorgeous everything is going to be. And so far, <laughs> uh, that's been fairly accurate, that description, since probably about. Mm, uh, for probably about 20 years. So that's pretty awesome. At least 15, that's for sure. So, um, I wanted to show a little bit of this and obviously talk out the side of my neck the entire time, as well, you, as, well as show you how long Gracie's hair is. And when her hair gets as long as that shirt, then, and only then, will we cut it. Um, but I missed you guys, and I missed doing this. Uh, but I also missed just walking around with Gracie and not talking. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to do that now. So with that, it's Mike's and Gracie from LiveMyAssOff.com. Saying I hope you're living the dream. Because if you're not living the dream, I truly believe you are doing it wrong. And I can say that because I know it. And for me, I did it wrong. Trust me, I did it wrong for more than a day in a row. And uh, so I would submit that, that allows me to have quite the perspective to be able to say, don't do that <laughs> um, because you know I, I mean I haven't had a bad day in decades I have bad hours I have imperfect minutes but I haven't had a bad day in 20 years easily so I invite you to have that as your goal if happiness is something that you desire on a regular basis I've had people label me as being oh my god Mike you're so damn happy you're way too damn happy Jesus, you're always so happy. We'll bring it. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys soon. Ciao.